Greetings, people on YouTube. We are students from BMT 311 Immunology. Today, we are going to talk about mucosal immunity and chronic inflammation. If you think that this is what your intestine looks like, I'm sorry as I have bad news for you. Because this is what your intestine should look like, surrounded by millions or trillions of bacteria. Some of them are good bacteria and some of them are bad bacteria. So how could this happen? How could the bacteria survive in our body and our body didn't do anything of it? Let's take a look of our intestine. Our intestine is made up of mucous membrane. This membrane lines various cavities in our body, cover the surface of internal organ and serve as a barrier between environment and internal body. Sometimes, pathogen will manage to survive and enter to the mucous membrane. This will trigger mount. Mount is mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. It is a cluster of lymphoid cells that serve as a protection in mucosa region against foreign antigen. Mount can be further classified based on the location. For example, if it is nasal, it will be mouth. If it is in bronchus, it will be bout. If it is in gut, it will be gout. You get the idea. Remember what we talked about just now? The bacteria that we say just now is a commensal bacteria or we call it gut flora. They live within our intestinal tract and plays an important role in mucosa immunity. Pathogenic antigen that wants to get across our mucosa barrier must first compete with this commensal in our body. Our body have developed tolerance to commensal bacteria as they provide us a lot of benefits such as food absorption. In our gastrointestinal tract, there is a special kind of antibody known as secretory IgA. This antibody is secreted to the lumen, where they encounter with the foreign antigen as well as the gut microbiota. The function of this antibody is to prevent the access of potential pathogenic antigen across the barrier into our body. This phenomenon is known as immune exclusion. The symbiotic relationship prevents infection from opportunistic pathogen and the pathogen will be cleared along peristalsis. Upon binding to the antigen, secretory IgA is biased toward inductions of tolerance instead of activating immune system that later leads to the secretion of pro-inflammatory mediator. So how does the mucosal immunity related to chronic inflammation? Let's put on our imagination. Imagine the amount of microbiota present in our gastrointestinal tract. If these microbes are lucky enough to get across the mucosal barrier, our immune system will be continually activated to produce chemicals that promote inflammation and eventually the inflammation could become chronic. The secretory IgA, however, will keep those microbes separate from the inside of the body and prevent the activation of the immune system. Secretory IgA play an important role in down-regulating inflammatory response so that our cells do not damage by the inflammation. Chronic inflammation can lead to inflammatory bowel diseases such as Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Based on the study we have done, the trend of chronic inflammation-associated gut disease is actually rising in the last one decade, especially the IBD. This may be due to the urbanization and changing diet. Studies have also proven that the overuse of antibiotic during neonatal life could disrupt the symbiotic relationship in the lumen permanently. The disruption can lead to gut leakage, which causes easier access of those pathogenic materials across the protective barrier. This makes one more prone to chronic inflammation associated disease. Chronic inflammation causes stress to the cell and possible to increase the rate of mutation which leads to development of cancer cells. Some inflammation has proved to associate with cancer development such as Helicobacter pylori infections that cause peptide ulcer. Since chronic inflammation makes us suffer and result in long-term damage, how can we cure it? Fortunately, there are various treatments for this problem. 
These treatments include non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, steroid, and supplements. All of the treatments target and reduce inflammation. Before we receive a treatment, a proper consultation from doctor should be obtained as the long-term usage of some treatments may induce health risks.